Alrighty, so we're going to have our video notes on volume in the metric system. So title on top of your page, volume or volume in the metric system. We have three purposes today. Uh, the first one that we have is to know the SI unit for measuring volume. The second one is know how to find the volume of a regular, irregular, and a liquid object. And number three, know the two different types of units for volume. And that kind of pairs with our first one. So these first and third kind of pair together in the idea of what the SI unit is. But there's kind of two different ones because there's one for liquid and there's one for solid. So just like when we talked about length, we're going to look at comparing them to our U.S. customary units uh, and comparing, just kind of getting that reference of the size of these things. Um, so we're going to look at a liter and a gallon, a liter and a quart, and a milliliter or a fluid ounce. In looking, we can see that if we have one liter and one gallon, so if one gallon is 3.79 liters, so that means it would take appro approximately three and three quarters uh, one liter bottles to equal a gallon. So a gallon is almost four times as big as a liter. So with that, that means that our gallon is going to be the bigger option. And now moving on to a liter or a quart. And so with this information, we see that one quart is just a little bit more than a liter, a little bit less than that liter. So one quart is 0 0.94 liters. Uh, which means in this case, a liter is going to be bigger because one quart is not quite worth as much as a liter. Okay, so what that means, so then this image below is kind of giving an idea of one liter is this big and 0 0.094 liters is this big. Okay. okay, so that means we have to circle our one liter. And now we're looking at one milliliter or one fluid ounce. And so looking over here at our information, <clears throat> we have one fluid ounce is 29.573 milliliters, which means that one 12 ounce can of soda would equal approximately 355 milliliters. And actually, if you look at a can of soda the next time you have one or have one around, you can look and typically it'll list 12 ounces and then also list 355 milliliters. So in this case, they will list both of them. And of course, in this scenario, one fluid ounce is quite a bit larger than a milliliter. Uh, it's almost 30 times larger. So we're absolutely going to circle our fluid ounce. All right, now we're going to go ahead and look at our metric units. So we have three bullet points here. Um, I would say a really important one. We already really have this volume, if you are the definition for volume. If you want to rewrite it, absolutely. Uh, the second one, I would say absolutely you should write. This tells us our base unit, which is important, which is the liter, uh, and gives us our symbols for that. The standard, helpful to know, that'll show up in your practice. Uh, one liter is equal to one cubic decimeter, which is shown over here. You may notice that it's labeled as centimeters over here, <clears throat> and that's because one decimeter is 10 centimeters. And so this is just saying the exact same thing. And we'll be using cubes like this later uh, to show you kind of that that's a liter. If we have that, and if you do 10 times 10 times 10, that gives us a thousand. Um, we'll talk about that's one of our calculations for finding it. Um, one important thing right here, so if I'm identifying this as important, that should be a big red flag for you, is we use liters to measure the volume of a liquid and uh, meters cubed or centimeters cubed would be used for solids. <clears throat> now with that, okay, uh, we have our two SI units for this type of measurement for volume. And with that, we have our SI unit of a liquid being a liter, okay, and a solid is going to be that cubic meter or meters cubed. And so this right here is really, it's going to be written the same way as this, okay, those are the exact same things. Uh, now with that, the way I typically recommend people to rem remember it is, the easiest way is to think of a liter, okay, which is represented with a letter L, can be then idea being linked to liquid with the letter L as well. And they both have L, so I think liquid liter. Uh, if it's not a liquid, if it's a solid, uh, then we're doing our cubic meters, and that's what we'd have over here. So if you just remember one of them, you can then by process of elimination get the next one. 
if we look at some more of these metric units, so now we're over on this side over here, uh, one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters, and one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. I would say this is something that's going to be really helpful to know, this second one. This one is something you can kind of get through the conversions or you might just kind of get after you use it enough. But this is going to be really, really important, this conversion right here. Uh, and the reason that that is so important is that allows us to easily convert or change our units from representing a liquid like milliliters to a solid. So if we measure something and to have a volume of 50 milliliters, but it's actually solid, then we'd actually have to write centimeters cubed. And we'll talk about uh, a method in which that can be really important and be careful. So that's going to be a conversion that's really important, recognizing that a milliliter is the same as a cubic centimeter. Uh, for which is larger, so now if we're looking down here, uh, we can see, let's see, so one liter or 1500 milliliters. Well, if we just said that one liter up here is equal to a thousand milliliters, then that's going to mean that our uh, 1500 milliliters is going to be bigger because that would be equivalent to 1.5 meters. And now we got 200 milliliters or 1.2 uh, liters. That is definitely going to be liters because that's much, much larger. Um, than that, we already said one liter is a thousand milliliters, right? And finally, 12 cubic centimeters or 1.2 milliliters. So this one's pretty interesting, right? So we talked about how one milliliter is equal to a cubic centimeter. Okay, so if that's the case, then these are actually equal units. Okay, that means that centimeters cubed is equal to milliliters. So now all I have to do is just look at our number and we'll actually find that then 12 cubic centimeters is larger because 12 is just a bigger number. All right, so now on this page, we're talking about measuring of just volume. So it may be helpful for you to put a little subheader within your notes and identifying that we're right here just looking at measuring a volume of a liquid, right? So we're just looking at our liquid volume and so we want to make sure that we have that idea, right? We're looking at our liquid volume. So <clears throat> first off, we will be using a graduated cylinder to, or we'll be using graduated cylinders to find the volume of liquids and other objects. Okay, so that means the tool that we use is graduated cylinders. So what I would probably do is under that measuring volume of liquid, I would say tool we use, graduated cylinders, okay? Next, read the measurement based on the bottom. Okay, of the meniscus. So the meniscus is the fancy word to use for this curve. You see here we have this kind of curve in this line. And this actually happens, and you'll see this when you practice it. The water curves when it's in a really narrow tube, okay, and like most graduated cylinders. And we have to actually read from the bottom of this, okay. So from that lowest point, we have to do. Um, when using a real cylinder, make sure you are eye level with the level of the water not standing above it. So you want to kind of make sure that if we're looking, our eyes are right level with this so we can get a more accurate measurement. And with this, what is the volume of the water in the cylinder? So we, it's 43 milliliters. So let's check. So if we have 40 and we have to count our intervals. Okay, well, if we look, there's an interval for each single digit all the way up to 50. So that means we just got to count them. So you go one, two, three. Okay, it's not there's no half. A lot of people want to go right up to here. It's not. We're looking right here. And so that's going to give us right at three. And that's where you get the 43 milliliters. And our unit is milliliters because it is a liquid. All right. So let's practice here a little bit. Uh, and so let's go ahead and answer these questions on identifying the amount of volume in each one of these graduated cylinders. Keep in mind, these intervals, these little dashes, will change in each one, right? You'll get a graduated cylinder while we're in this unit that may vary. So we have to make sure we're paying attention to those different intervals. So let's go ahead and answer A, B, and C for the volumes. And if we find those volumes, then we can find that the first one is going to be 52 milliliters, all right? And we can see that, so we go to 50, and then we have one, Two, and we know it's two because we have one little dash for each one so we can just count it so this is a nice and easy one to use and so we're at 52 milliliters and of course it's milliliters because it's liquid moving on to the next one we will find it to be 37 milliliters and so we go up to 35 and we can do 36 37 right because then it'll be 38 39 40 so we can still count by ones in this case we just have 
going by fives and rather than this one we're going by tens and so we're going to have 37 milliliters and for this next one we're going to have 23 milliliters okay and so now with this one uh, we have these intervals they're not as clear we're going up by fives which means this middle point is going to be about uh, two and a half right so this would be seven and a half so that means if we have this two and we have our two and a half or just past that then that means that we're probably about 23 milliliters this type of scale i personally don't like too much sometimes you'll come across it in some of our graduated cylinders so i want to make sure that's clear uh, but typically we'll have more that are like a and b so if you found a and b uh, fairly easy or you understood them then you should be sitting pretty good but just be ready to pay attention to these types of intervals as well all right and so now we're looking at measuring volume of a regular solid okay so there's two types of solids there's a regular and irregular we're just going to talk about a solid okay so again i'll probably put another little subheader in your notes and mean that now we're only talking about regular solids so we can measure the volume of a regular object using the formula formula length times width times height okay this is something that may sound familiar uh, something you've seen before and now a regular solid now before we move on i want to make sure i define that here quick is anything that's essentially a cube or a rectangle something that has straight edges uh, and can easily be measured with a straight edge like our metric ruler okay so most objects in the world aren't regular solids okay but sometimes we do and we can find those volumes fairly easily and it can be helpful for finding the volume of a room or things like that as well so if we do that we got to multiply then our 10 our 8 and our 9 and so we're going to go ahead and put those into our blanks here so we're going to have 10 times 9 or sorry 10 times 8 times 9 centimeters and if we do that we will end up with 720 centimeters cubed Okay, so now this unit changed a little bit. It's, we have this three here, cubed or cubic centimeters. Our unit is cubed, so that's that small number three, because we multiplied three of the same unit together. So that's where this three came from over here, and it's because we have one, two, three centimeters. And so that means we have centimeters cubed. That's where that comes from. We don't just assign it. It's because it's a three-dimensional object. If you're finding the area, then it's squared because you use two measurements. In this case, we use three. That's why it's cubed. All right, and now finally, we're moving on to our third type of volume measurement, and that's going to be of an irregular solid. Okay, so an irregular solid is any solid that isn't a... Uh, easily measured so isn't a square isn't a rectangle isn't a triangle those types of, th types of things that we have easy equations to calculate they're things that are a little bit harder to measure right so it could be a rock or things like that in this case we have some marbles here um, which aren't completely irregular but it's sometimes easier to use this method so if we measure the volume of an irregular object so no flat sides okay is the our general rule that we're going to use for this um, using the water displacement method so that's how we can measure it so water displacement method is something you're going to absolutely want to know that's how we find the volume of an irregular object the method we use is the water displacement method okay now with that there's a couple of steps we have to take so we have the amount of water with object so we identify that amount first so if you look at the amount of water with the object that's going to be our graduated cylinder over here okay so let's if we just want to number these for easier so let's call that our number two graduated cylinder and let's call this one our number one so that way it's a little bit easier to refer to that's completely fine so if we do that uh, then we're going to have the amount of water with that object is going to uh, six milliliters so we can put our six over here okay because right now this total is it's reading six okay and if you move on then to the amount of water without the object so that's going to be our left one that's going to be the one we talked about as being our number one okay we're going to find that it is four milliliters because we have it right at our four here okay and our final step is finding the difference so the volume of the object so the difference essentially meaning the displacement or in other words how big of a difference did this water level make so if we're looking that we have you know it's starting about right here then that water level rose to about here that change 
is going to be our volume of the objects that we added down here. We added those objects and it rose by this amount here. And in this case, we can take our number from here minus our number here. So we're going to take 6 minus 4 and we're going to get 2 centimeters cubed. Okay, so now you'll notice this is different, right? Because one milliliter is one centimeter cubed. Well, why would my answer be in centimeters cubed? Well, that's pretty straightforward. We have a solid, right? It is a solid, so it has to be centimeters cubed. Here, we were looking at the amount in our graduated cylinder of water, so we left them at milliliters, the total volume. When we're just talking about that solid, it has to be centimeters cubed. And that's that, remember when I talked about in the beginning, one milliliter is equal to a centimeter cubed. So that's actually a pretty easy switch. We just trade the unit because they're equivalent. They're equal. So we can just do that. And it means the exact same thing. It just tells us that this reported volume is for a solid and not a liquid. All right, so it's summary, summary time. So we're gonna do that. So here's our three purposes, right? So again, you're not just copying these down but you're gonna talk about those things. So talk about in your summary, okay, what is the SI unit for measuring volume? There's two of them, right? Uh, know how to find the volume of a regular, irregular, and liquid object, and know the two different types of units, so solid or liquid. So again, one and three kind of go together with that one. So please talk about that in your summary. Thanks for watching this video on finding volume in the metric system for different types of objects. Uh, some of these slides were adapted uh, from Science Spot uh, by Trimpe. Uh, so if you would like to see some of those materials, please go there.